You love porn, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you've lost. You love God. Okay, well, I'm just saying there's many people who do love, do love porn. There's many people who do love the ways of the world. And that's why people don't listen. That's why people don't want anything to do with my message. Because you hate the light. You hate the Lord Jesus Christ. But Christ says, I love you. Christ says, I died for you. Christ said, I took a crown of thorns in my skull. I was crucified. I nailed through my hands and my feet. I died there so that you might be forgiven. And I'll tell you, when we see on the paintings, when we see in the film, the crucifixes, and we see all that, that was not the worst bit. The Bible says between the sixth and the ninth hour, darkness fell on the land. And between those three hours, Jesus Christ cried with a loud voice, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And in those three hours, God poured out all of his wrath, all of his anger on Jesus, not because he'd done anything wrong, because your sin is vile, it's wicked, and you need to be forgiven, and you need Jesus Christ to come and let that blood that was shed wash you white and snow. I'm preaching my heart out here today, not because I want to, but because I don't want you to go to hell. So please hear this message and come to the Son of God who loved you enough to be crucified. He left the glories of heaven, he left comfortable heaven, he left all of that majesty to come down to this rotten earth and die for you. And if you reject him, if you reject the Son of God, imagine how great the wrath will be when you rejected the most wonderful thing who came to this. Do you believe in God? Do you? Do you? You don't? Do you believe in God? Yeah, you do. Which God do you believe in? You believe in Allah? What about Jesus Christ? What do you think of Jesus Christ, sir? I believe Jesus is God, yeah. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Died as a man. Come and talk to me, my friend. I'm at, well, this Muslim, this Muslim man, he asked me a question. He said, how can God die? It's very simple. Jesus was fully God, fully man. It was the man that died, and then Christ's spirit raised himself back from the dead. Very, very simple, you see. I'd like to ask that Muslim man a question. And my question to him would be, what do you do when you meet God and you've got your sin attached to you? Here's a question for you, okay? Is there anyone in Manchester today who's ever told a lie? Girls, have you ever told a lie? Yeah. Yeah, you have. Well, at least you're telling the truth there. I've told lies, okay? Did you know this? The Bible says that all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Now, I've told lies. You've told lies. We've got a problem there. According to the Bible, every single liar will go to hell. Have you told lies, lads? Yeah. You've never... That's a lie right there. I'm sure you have told lies, my friend. I've told lies, okay? And this is what I'm out here to tell you is... Though we've done wrong, we're sinners and we have no hope in ourselves. We can't save ourselves. 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross so you could be forgiven. Yeah, I think we can refuse a gift. You can keep your religion, sir. We're out here to tell you about a person who saves sinners, not religion. Religion won't save anyone. It's only Christ who can save you. You can say Hail Marys, you can go to Mass, you can go to the mosque. That won't save you. The only thing that will save you is having Christ's blood washing away all of your sins. And I'm asking you today, have you come to the cross? Has Jesus washed away your sins? The man who's taking photos, what do you think of Jesus Christ? And I tell you that. What do you think of the Son of God who died for sinners? Do you think God exists? Big questions, aren't they, today? What do you think, sir? You believe he does? Do you believe God exists? Do you believe God loves us all? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe Jesus died for sinners? My friend, you're on the right lines there. I'm glad you believe Jesus died for sinners. As you're going by in Manchester, I'm asking you, do you recognize any of these famous prisons? Number three, okay? We've got the policeman over there. I'm gonna ask the policeman. Do you recognize this, this, this uh, prison? It's very close to home. I wonder if you've ever taken anyone there. It's really bad to go there. The maze in Northern Ireland, the H-blocks. Okay? In life, there are two things that are sure. Death and taxes. And my friend, I'm asking you, when you die, do you have a hope beyond the grave? I'm saying, do you recognize these famous prisons here? But well, there's a prison that lives within us all. And that is one day we're all going to be bound, we're all going to die. But Jesus Christ said this, if the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Let me repeat that. If the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. And if Jesus Christ sets you free from your death, got to hope beyond the grave because there was one who came into this world and he hung on a cross.
You know they beat him. You know they spat on him. You know they plucked out his beard. You know they put nails to his hands and his feet. On the cross, the loveliest person who ever entered into this world died the most horrible death. He was crucified for your sins. On the cross, Jesus Christ took all of your lies, all of your blasphemy, all of your sex outside of marriage, all of your drunkenness, all of your hatred, all of your abortion, all of your pride, all of the sins that you and I have committed. On the cross, Jesus Christ was crushed there. He was punished there so that you could be forgiven. So any man, any woman who says, have mercy on me, God, save me, you know that you can have a hope beyond the grave. Because when Jesus died, he was put in the tomb. And what happened on the third day? What happened on the third day when Jesus was put in that tomb? Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And that's why you'd be very wise to put your faith in him. Because if any one of you dies and then comes back from the dead, I'll listen to what you have to say. And that's why we listen to Jesus when he says, put your faith in me. I'll give you eternal life because I've beaten the grave. And even though you're going to die one day, even though there's a grave that is waiting every single one of you, Jesus Christ can empty that grave and give you a hope beyond the grave and eternal life. And my big question to you today is this, not whether you're rich or poor, not whether you're smart or intelligent, not where you're from, not whether you're from the north or the south. My big question for you today is this, are you going to heaven or hell? Because you're going to hell if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you put your trust in him, it's not by works we're saved, if you put your trust in him, you can know 100% you're going to heaven. Because Christ says, I will empty your grave, I'll give you eternal life. The most beautiful verse in the Bible goes like this. Have you heard it before? It says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you have everlasting life? Have you put your trust in the begotten son who came into this world to die for you? But what would be the evidence you need to believe in a God? What would be the evidence that would convince you that God exists? I'm asking you that question today. Do you believe in God? And what kind of God do you believe in? Do you believe in the God of the Bible, the God of Islam, the God of Muslims? What God do you believe in? Because here today, we're trying to give you hope that 2,000 years ago, the Son of God bled and died on a cross. Now, everyone take a good look at me, okay? I'm a married man. What do you think? Do you think I've ever made my wife cry before? Lads, do you think I've ever made my wife cry before? Do you think I've ever made my wife cry before? What do you reckon? I have, okay? You see these eyes? Now imagine everything I've seen in my life was put on that shop. Would I be embarrassed of anything I've ever seen before? Yeah, I would, I would. Now I know I'm a dweeb, okay? You see these fists here? Do you think I've ever hit anyone with these fists? No, you don't. I have. I would never hit him, he'd knock me out. I wouldn't hit him. But I have actually, okay? But now ask me this question. Am I going to heaven? I am. I am, but not because I'm a good person. As you can see, I'm not. I've told lies, I've done wrong things. But I'll tell you why I'm going to heaven. Because Jesus died on a cross for my sins. And my friend, he died for you too. And the big question is, will you put your trust in him? Or have you? You put your trust in him. You are the right person to speak to. What's your name, sir? Dean. Dean. My friend Dean's put his trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm asking you, are you, are you like Dean? Are you like me? Have you put your faith in Christ? when he washes away your sins. Take care, Dean. Thank you for your time. And if you reject him, you will stay in your sins. The problem is, you and I have got a grave that awaits every single one of us. Every single one of us will die. And if we die without Jesus, we will pay for our sins for all of eternity in hell. I know that sounds serious, but it's the truth. And in hell, there are no fire exits. Did you know in hell, people cry out, they pray, but no one answers. Did you know in hell, people cry out for mercy, too late. There's no way out. There's a great chasm which is fixed in hell. But I'm telling you today, if you come to Christ, your hell can be erased. It's gone forever. If you come to Christ, Jesus Christ took your hell on the cross. He took your lies. He took your blasphemy. He took your sex outside of marriage, your abortion, your sin, all of the wrong things you and I have done. On the cross, Jesus Christ suffered there. He took the wrath of God so you could be forgiven. And I pleading with you today, do not reject this message. Do not reject Jesus Christ. Because hell is Why would you say that, sir? Come and talk to me. Don't just say hail Satan. Come back and talk to me. If you really do believe in Satan, I dare you to come and talk to me. If you believe in Satan, come and talk to me. Because I believe in the in the Son of God who is light. And the Son of and I'll tell you something. There is there is 
one who's coming with the spirit of Satan, the Antichrist. But the Bible tells us this, that the very breath of the Son of God's mouth will slay the Antichrist. And I'm telling you, when you die, you need to make sure which system are you in. Are you in the beast system? Do you follow Satan and his ways? Or are you following Christ? Because you need to make sure that when all of this unravels, and you can tell me right now, this world is winding down, things are getting worse and worse, and you need to know when it's all over, are you on the winning side? Are you following the ways of the devil? Come to Christ today. Receive Jesus Christ. The light of the world came into this world to show you what light was, to show you what God is like. But men love darkness rather than light. And that's why no one's listening to me today, because you love darkness more than light. You love your sex outside of marriage. You love your drunkenness. You love your rude films on the TV. You love your blasphemy. You love everything that is against God, and that's why you will not listen to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said this. He said, I came to my own, but my own did not receive me. And here's the big question. I'll finish with this. Have you received Jesus Christ? Have you received him, or are you going to reject him? Come to Christ today before it's too late.